Display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell the story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. There we go. You know, this is harder than it looks in a limited space. Just want to clarify that. I was, yes, yes, that Christ candle is not easy to light if you are vertically challenged. I'm going to knock this whole thing over. And that remind me of my wedding when I knocked over a candle that was lit. So, Good morning, friends. Good morning. Wes, we obviously forgot to light the candles. 
Good morning on this Sunday that we are celebrating the epiphany of the wise men. Some churches do it today, some will do it next Sunday. Uh, epiphany is on the 6th, so take your pick. Everyone take a deep breath. Let it out. Please join me for the call to worship. Herod's treachery could not stop hope. All the fears and fights of this world cannot diminish God's light. Thanks be to God for the most precious gift of light. Let us sing our hymn of praise. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the fear
We come now where we share our joys, we share our concerns, our prayer requests. Are there any to share this morning? Oh, sh you're going to give her a mic or you're going to control the mic? What are we doing, Wes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to say to everyone who gave me, Wesley, um, Haley, I forgot, who, Natalie. Natalie, the cards and all the gifts, this, like, th last Sunday. I just want to say thank you to all of you, and that's it. <laughs> That's good enough. We thank you as well. Oh, it is a husband-wife. We're going to fight over the mic. Here we go. I have a praise. I talked to Brenda Moore uh, this week, and she's still struggling. It was the first Christmas. But I also talked to her daughter, Jennifer, and her last PET scan was clear. For now, there's no cancer, so that's wonderful. Hope it stays that way. Pray it stays that way. Yes, a definite praise indeed. You could have just taken the mic, Dave. I thought I was doing all that. I don't do, I don't do that. I get <laughs> smacked. Uh, I was telling you about my friend that was in Houston with the thyroid cancer. He is back home. Uh, they said that the thyroid cancer is just up in the thyroid area. He is a having chemotherapy and stuff, but he is back home, and I, I don't know how well he's doing. I haven't really talked to him, but uh, he, he is back home from Houston and uh, going, undergoing weekly treatments for the thyroid cancer. Definitely continue to pray for him. Pray that it doesn't spread elsewhere. Oh, back here first, Paul couple. Um, just an update on my niece and nephew's half-brother who had the stroke. He's in his 20s. Um, he has gone to rehab. He still has uh, paralysis on the right side. Um, his speech is coming back a little bit more and more. They're hoping that he'll go home in a couple weeks, so that could be a challenge too. Um, also, Jessica and I have a co-worker who's um, Father, I believe um, it's his business that burned down in Matthews over the holidays, and they are trying to um, figure out a temporary place to go until they can rebuild. But just the employees and things that are, um, you know, unsure about work and finances and stuff at this time. Definitely pray for all of them. Prayers for Richard and Rosalie Campbell. Uh, it's an older couple that we know in uh, Chicago, actually, and uh, pray for them. They are facing significant life changes due to health, so they need need a lot of prayers. Definitely, thank you, Paul. Others, what'd you get for Christmas, Chuck? A lot of little things from granddaughters. Homemade stuff. What'd Santa give you? Santa doesn't come for you, Daddy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you get, Larry? I got everything I asked for. Um, so, did you want me to just go on up and? <laughs> Would you? They might prefer that to a sermon. Who knows? Man. <laughs> this side. Don't know if I'm talking to Larry today. Jeez. Wynoka, what'd you get for Christmas? Um, I got these pretty earrings. What'd Joe get? Uh, shoes and uh, NCAA tickets in Indy for March. We don't know if IU will be there, but maybe we can watch Purdue if they're not. Nah, they don't make the tournament. <laughs> Julie, what'd you get for Christmas? Um, I got this really beautiful necklace for my husband. So sweet. I'm still looking at you, Larry Garrett. 
Anyone else? Joys, concerns, anything online? Yes, we did get a uh, message from Diana Harvey this morning. Um, she got out of the hospital on Friday. Uh, she is very tired, but thanks everyone for their prayers and for the calls that you've made over the phone to her. Um, uh, Diana, I have to read it exactly what you wrote it. Good morning means have a good new year. There you go. Um, for those of you who don't know, Diana had an infection, has an infection, and had to spend a couple days in the hospital. But when I talked to her the other day, she sounded as joyous as ever. And so definitely glad that you are home. The new year is no place to spend the hospital if you don't have to. We continue to pray for Sandy and Butch and the rest of their family, the death of Bernita. Um, we do have some congratulations for some folks who are not here this morning. Steve Michael and Debbie Shepard both have decided to retire. Um, and so this, they'll find themselves in this new year as some retired folks. I did talk to Dave Shepard, and I told him that people think they've been sleeping in on Sundays for a year. Um, but unfortunately, Wabash has not been able to find a minister, and so he's still filling the pulpit there on Sundays. So he did say, hello, everyone. Um, and so we'll see what kind of adventures they get themselves into. I know Judy has travel plans for Steve coming in the new year. Um, Wes and I saw them the other day after at lunch, right after church. Yeah, it was like they got something in January. They got something, like it's, it almost felt like every first, like every, the first four or five months, there was something every month for them. That was just amazing. I'm like, I, don't, I can plan a day ahead of time, let alone five months like that. So... If you know Steve, you know he's traveled the world for work, and so now he and his wife get to travel for fun. So congratulations to Debbie and Steve on their retirements. Any others? Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we come to you today and we give thanks for your son, Jesus the Christ. God, we gather with the wise men in awe. God, we celebrate the birth of this small baby who looks like he can't do much, but God, how he has done so much for us because of your love. God, we continue to pray for those who are grieving this holiday season. Continue to pray for those who are hurting, those who are feeling broken, those who are homeless, who don't have enough to eat. God, those who are facing difficult decisions in life and those who are facing the end of their lives as we celebrate a new year. God, we lift up the praise about Jennifer this morning. God, we know that you continue to be with her. God, we lift up and congratulate Debbie and Steve on their retirements. God, they've worked hard in their fields, and now they can enjoy life a bit more. God, in this new year, may we commit to following in the footsteps of Christ. God, not to be perfect, because we know we'll falter. But God, we commit to doing the best we can, that when we fail, we will listen to the call to discipleship each morning, and we will receive it. We will gladly say, here I am, I will follow and God, as we often do, we lift up to you those things on our hearts and minds on this last Sunday of the year and a time of silent prayer.
God, hear our prayers. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Matthew 2, 1 to 12. The visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a leader who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, 
Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I might go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and they, there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. We begin this morning from a book we've used several times, from Sounding the Season's 70 Sonnets for the Christian Year by Mel Malcolm Geit. It's entitled The Magi. It might have been just someone else's story. Some chosen people get a special king. We leave them to their peculiar glory. We don't belong, it doesn't mean a thing. But when these three arrive, they bring us with them. Gentiles like us, their wisdom might be ours. A steady step that finds an inner, inner rhythm, a pilgrim's eye that sees beyond the stars. They did not know his name, but still they sought him. They came from otherwhere, but still they found. In palaces found those who sold and bought him, but in the filthy stable hallowed ground. Their courage gives our questing hearts a voice to seek, to find, to worship, rejoice. So this morning's scripture starts with these three wise men, we're told, and they just ask a question. Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews, right? They say, well, we observed his star and it's rising and we've come to pay him homage. How weird these guys must have looked to people, right? They're not from the area. These men from the east... These men whom biblical scholars believe were astrologers who read the heavens and advised rulers on their plans. We've heard a lot about guys like this throughout the Bible, right? Especially in the Old Testament. We have people who interpret dreams and the stars. They advise leaders. This is a risky occupation. If their messages are not received in good light by a ruler, they could, pe they could pay a most hefty price which would be their life. We know from the Old Testament when someone tells a king what they don't want to hear, right? I'm sorry, sir, you're going to lose in battle, right? It's not a good thing. So this is a very risky occupation even outside of Jerusalem. And these wise men, they know centers of power, right? They work with people who are powerful, given their profession. And so it makes sense that they would travel to Jerusalem and into Herod's court, because why wouldn't Herod know? Surely he would know about where this baby is to be born, this baby who it says is the king of the Jews, who better, right, than the king of the people, He's the ruler. He's the one with all the power. He should know this. And so these astrologers place the so-called Star of Bethlehem in a different light, right? They're not the only ones who see the star in the night. We imagine lots of people from not only Jerusalem, but obviously the east of there have seen this. But yet, these three guys seem to be the only ones paying attention and put the star in a different light. The star of Bethlehem is often looked at as an extraordinary event. But perhaps it's not that at all. Perhaps the star instead is ordinary. What we know about stars now is some of them appear every so often. Right? It was only a couple years ago that we were able to see the star right? We think about eclipses. These only happen every so often. And so to us, it would make sense that this is just one of those things that you can see every so often. But the difference is the extraordinary eyes of the Magi. 
They had eyes to see it, unlike Herod, who doesn't even seem to know Jewish tradition or scripture. He has to have chief priests and scribes do research for him. They're not even up on it, right? Oh, sir, yeah, I guess that was a thing we should have been paying attention to. So Herod can't see the star with his own eyes. He might see it, but he doesn't see it for what it is. And the Magi, it seems, not only study their charts and their history, but they know what they're looking for. They know for what they've been waiting. It's interesting. These people who aren't even Jewish have been waiting for this. But as smart as they appear to be, the Magi obviously make a mistake going to Jerusalem. They make a mistake in speaking to Herod and even getting anywhere near where Herod could call them into a conversation. And once they visit with them, they know they've made a mistake, right? It doesn't say that in the scripture, but we know that they know that they've made a mistake. If it weren't a mistake, he would have been able to answer the question about the location of the baby. They would have said, we have come to see the baby, this king of the Jews, and Herod would have said, oh, he's right here. Also, if Herod known and was okay with it, would the baby really have been born among some animals, right? No. But the biggest clue they've made a mistake is in what Herod says to them. He says, report back to me when you find this baby, because I would love to pay him homage as well. I, the king of this area, right? I, the one who the Romans are letting rule this area, would love to kneel before a baby. Right? We don't have a king, but we did all probably watch the coronation of King Charles, either on the news or live, right? You imagine Charles going to kneel before someone else as the king. Doesn't happen. That's not the role. And so the king says, I want to visit this baby born to a peasant mother in Bethlehem. Red flags, right? All over the place. They know that he does it, especially when the prophecies say that this baby will be more powerful than Herod by proclaiming, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. In other words, you will be greater than Herod. You will be greater than Caesar. You will be greater than anyone. So they know. They know they've made a mistake talking to the king. And when they leave the king, the wise men see the star again, and it guides them to where the baby is, lying in his mother's arms, or maybe taking a nap, right? They put all this time and effort into finding, and yet this baby is not talking. This baby is not performing miracles. This baby is not doing anything that ties him to Jewish prophetic tradition. This baby is simply being a baby. For those of you who have had a child or have nieces or nephews, and you've held a baby right after it's born, or grandchildren, that's all Jesus is at this moment, right? He's not doing anything fantastic. This baby does not look at all what Isaiah chapter 9 prophesies for the Jewish people. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. 
He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. Just looks like a baby. And we have to wonder what these Gentiles from afar thought they would see when they arrived, right? What did they think? We have no idea. But isn't it interesting? What did they think they would happen upon? They traveled all this way for what? A sleeping baby? A crying baby? A baby that Mary and Joseph are trying to figure out how to change the diaper of? A baby that doesn't look any more extraordinary or powerful than any other baby these three men have seen in their own families. Yet, these men do something remarkable. They kneel down and pay homage to this little being. They pay tribute to this baby born into a family of meager means to marry and Joseph. The wise men say, we have gifts for you, little one. This is what we have traveled all this way for. And they offer gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Anyone get any gold for Christmas? Anyone get any gold jewelry for Christmas? My mom got me this necklace, right? Anyone get any frankincense for Christmas? No? George, you didn't get any frankincense for Christmas. Hey, Carol, did you get any myrrh for Christmas? <sighs> Let down. But Larry Garrett, on your long list, no myrrh. Sorry, Patty, next year, myrrh. Remember. And even though these gifts seem a bit odd for a baby, it's important to note that these men bring gifts to a baby deem, they deem king of the Jews, but they ask for nothing in return. There's actually a refreshing lack of talk in this scripture, right? Lack of talk, but so much action. These men pay homage to a baby. These men who have studied charts and stars and history and waited to see what would actually happen if they saw this star at the right time and they followed it. These men who decided to take a chance to go and see if what they study really existed. These men put their faith into something not only extraordinary for Jews. This would have been extraordinary for any Jewish person person to do, right? But these are Gentiles. This is way beyond their belief system and their comfort zone, and we all know how much we love to go out of our comfort zones, but here they are. This is extraordinary, right? These Gentiles, these astronomers, these people who work in palaces with kings are here kneeling in front of a baby, giving this baby presents that would be for a king. This morning's scripture ends by telling us, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. They literally could not go home the same way they came. Physically, they had to take another road for their safety and for the safety of the Holy Family. They were not to go back near Herod. They could be killed if the king knows that they know the location, but they won't tell him. And if they do tell him the location of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, then that could spell disaster for the Holy Family. We know that Herod is not a kind man. In fact, we know from later in the gospel, the king has boys killed up until the age of two in that area in the hopes that he killed the Christ child, the one prophesied to be greater than any earthly 
ruler, the one who would bring God's justice and reign to the world. Herod does not care that he destroys families in his quest to retain power. And how'd that work out for him? The wise men, the educated scholars, the astrologers also could not go back home the same way they came in terms of their own hearts, their minds, their beliefs, right? Before we see something happen, even if we hope it will happen, it feels different than after it happens, right? And so they're different. They had the faith that they would find what they read about, what the star was pointing to, and they found the baby wrapped in cloth, being cuddled by his new earthly mom and dad. We don't know how long they had studied, how long they had waited. But imagine the joy, right? The giddiness. Imagine just the awe. They leave after meeting Jesus in a new way of being, as Gentiles who have received the gift of God as well. The love of God as well. Not just the Jewish people, but here you have these men, these Gentiles, these upper class who have encountered Jesus. And they return home as men who have a renewed hope in the future no matter what the chaos is in their world. And we have to wonder if when they went home, did they tell their families, did they tell their friends what they saw? Or did they keep it to themselves and they were just different, right? If they kept it to themselves, we really couldn't fault them because again, their lives could be in danger. But that's part of the story we don't know. Our question this morning is not where is the baby born king of the Jews, because we know. The question for us in the church this morning is, do we leave the manger scene each Christmas season in a new way of being? We have all the hype, all the anticipation, right? We prepare, we prepare for the Christmas season. But when you take everything else away, all the presents, the trees, all the food, show of hands if you feel like you ate all the food you could ever eat in the last week, right? Take it all away. And we encounter the Christ child. Do we leave the manger scene each Christmas season in a new way of being? The birth of Christ should change us, should encourage us, should strengthen our faith, should renew our hope in something better, should drive us to love others, should drive us to share the good news of the birth of Christ with others, should drive us to prepare to follow in his footsteps, should always be calling us into a new way of being in the image of God and the love of Christ. We end this morning with a poem from another book we've used before, Thomas John Carlyle's Looking for Jesus. And this poem is titled, Has Bethlehem Happened to Me? The question which Christmas must surely, the question which Christmas most surely should bring, along with the beautiful carols we sing and the happy excitement of trimming the tree, is simply, Has Bethlehem Happened? to me. The crush on the mantle has everyone there, Mary Joseph the shepherds positioned with care, and the Christ in the center for all folk to see, but still I must ask, is a place there for me? For it cannot be Christmas until I stoop down and enter a door into a faraway town and open my heart to the furthest degree of love than Bethlehem will happen to me. Let us sing our communion hymn.
Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when we pray. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do thy will. On this last Sunday of 2023, we come to this table once again, like every Sunday, and we remember that on the night that he was arrested, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we take this bread and we take this cup, we proclaim his death from this world as we know it until he comes again. The gifts of God for the children of God. All are welcome at the Lord's table. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to this table once again and we give thanks for the ultimate gift of your son. In this Christmas season, we celebrate his birth. But God, we always come to the table and remember his ministry, his life, his death, his resurrection, the promise, the glory. God, we give thanks for the covenant. God, as we take this bread and we take this cup, may they nourish our souls. And God, may we leave this table different than we arrived. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. And all God's children said, Amen. Let us take the bread and the cup.
Any announcements before we go? Wes? Uh, there was one. Uh, Carol Chambers has asked to remind all of the elders. Uh, you have your first elders meeting uh, for the new year this coming Wednesday, January 3rd at 6.30. She typed it specifically in, online, but I told her I said I would announce it out loud as well. Thank you, Carol. It was on my list, but I always like it when people remind me. Um, and you may have noticed in the Beacon, it still lists the pences, but we are waiting for a few other people to say yes to positions. And so Carol Chambers is, as of tomorrow, the chair of the elders. Um, so just to clarify that, that will be changed in the February Beacon. If anyone can help stay and take down decorations, even if you can just take some ornaments off the tree, that would be most helpful for us. Um, if you can't, that's fine. Are you pointing? Okay. If you feel so called to serve on the board, we have two positions open, children and youth, and an at-large position. Um, if not, well, I always joke that Joe will have to be the children of youth, but he's already the vice chair. So I guess we can't do that to him. Um, can't do that to the children. That is correct. Joe Lewis, we cannot do that to the children. Dave? <laughs> 
Uh, Dave's reminding us that one, the Salvation Army knows his name is Dave now and not Paul. But also, if you're able to give monetarily, please do that. But also remember, we also take food as well. And um, Sharon sent me an email not too long ago about things that food pantries could really use. And um, things like sanitary napkins, toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, things like that, they also need as well, right? It's not just food. And so whatever you're able to give would be most helpful. Any others? If not, let us say our benediction together. Gathered, we see God in our lives. Gathered, we hear from God's word. Gathered, we sing our praises to God. Gathered, we commune at the Lord's table. Dispersed, we shall share the love of God with the world. Go in love, go in peace. No one get in trouble tonight because I will be at home asleep. All God's children said Happy New Year and amen. amen.